Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Shelly from Ocean Connections, and we are so thrilled that you took the time out of this beautiful day to spend it with us. I think we have a really exciting program for you today. For those of you who are first timers at joining us, welcome. We are so glad to see you as well. So glad you could join us. I want to start by telling you a little bit about us. So Ocean Connections is um, a 501c3. We provide the marine mammal programming inside of the Milwaukee County Zoo. Now we're not the Milwaukee County Zoo. We're not funded through them whatsoever. So um, we want you to recognize that difference, but we do partner with them on some pretty wonderful programming. And so we thank you for coming out and joining us today because during COVID-19, one of the things that was our goal was to continue our educational mission. We really, really believe in inspiring kids and adults on conservation issues, making you guys aware of it, hopefully inspiring empathy and encouraging a change of direction because the actions that we all take every single day can either positively or negatively affect the animals that are around us. And around me right now are some pretty amazing marine mammals. Over the last eight weeks it's been, we have tried to give you guys um, a lot of information about marine mammals, about how they're doing out in the wild, and about the actions that we can all take to increase their survivability in the future. The goal is to inspire kids. And we do that in many ways. And today we have a really special program for you because we are going to be joined by our creative team. And that creative team is Peppermint Narwhal. They do all of our amazing graphics and you can check them out their work on, web, on our website. We thought it would be really fun to introduce the aspect of art today. Hi friend. <laughs> when we introduce the aspect of art, I mean, we want to uh, encourage kids to love nature and love animals in a variety of different ways. If you happen to know a budding artist and you and that person misses this program, no worries because we are uploading it directly following the program on our public Google Drive and also on our YouTube channel. So they will be able to go check it out as well as some additional supplementary educational materials. So don't forget that that resource is there. All right, I do think, well, let me start by introducing Scooter because he has decided to join us today. Hi, Scoots, how are you? Scooter himself is a budding artist and we're gonna be seeing a little bit of his work later on. Art is fun for everyone. We love what we do and we really believe that when we touch the heart, we will teach the mind and inspiring a love for animals in a variety of ways is our goal. So today we're talking about art and we work with a pretty creative, um, artistic, talented team. We are going to be joining you live right now with Brian Masuga. Thanks for having me today, Peppermint Shelley. I'm excited Narwhal. to be here. As we are Shelley so said, my happy name is Brian to have Masuga. you here, Brian. I'm an illustrator and one half of the creative team at Peppermint Narwhal. Our mission is conservation through creativity and we celebrate all animals. We like to use art, illustration and design to promote animal awareness, appreciation and conservation. We started a video series called How to Draw Awesome Animals with Peppermint Narwhal. And in this video series, we teach you how to draw animals in a fun and simple way while sharing facts about the species. And that's what we're gonna be doing live here today. So since we're at Ocean Connection, we're going to take a look at an animal today that you can find it, you've probably seen on many Facebook Live events for Ocean Connection, and that's the harbor seal. Now the harbor seal is a pinniped, and that's, pinnipeds are a clade, it's a type of classification in the uh, animal kingdom, and basically you can think of it as a branch of the tree of life. And on this branch you have three families, the, the harbor seal would belong to a family called the true seals or eared seals, and they're one of 18 species. Now, there's also two more families on that tree, and one of those families you can also see here at Ocean Connection, and that would be the uh, eared seals, and that's basically sea lions and fur seals. And of course, here at Ocean Connection, you would have the California sea lion. Now, the third family that you find on that branch is the walrus, and it's kind of all by itself. 
So the harbor seal is pretty cool. We're very, it's a cute animal, super fun to draw, and you're gonna find it's actually pretty easy as well. So we'll go ahead and get started here. And we're gonna go ahead and just use a pencil and paper as kind of my drawing method of choice. You're free to use whatever you like. I'm gonna start off with just drawing a little heart on my page, small. And there we go, we've all drawn a heart, so that's a good place to start. It's a simple, familiar drawing piece. Now, when we draw uh, in this series, I like to teach you how to draw using kind of something you're familiar with, and that's dot to dots. So I'm just gonna write above that heart I'm gonna put just a straight line. And much like in a dot to dot, you use two dots to connect a straight line. So there we go. Just sort of connect those together right above our heart. That looks pretty good. Now below the heart, I'm going to draw just a very small little line. You don't even need dots because it's so small. And then it's so basically I'm gonna make like an upside down Y below that. So just two little branches there. And you can see the up down, upside down Y right off of that heart. That looks pretty good. So now that I've got this, did these up, branches of the upside down Y. I'm going to start off with this far one here, put a dot here. I'm going to use this dot here and I'm going to put a dot out here and that's going to make what we call a, a curve line here. So I use three dots for a curve line. Um, it's a little different than a straight line, a little more complex. So the middle dot becomes kind of the arch of the curve. So you can go in either direction you want. The, either way, once we make our dots, you can pick whichever side. You can go over them if you like to darken them, start off light at first. There we go, I've got that sort of back side of the, we're basically drawing the snout here. So I'm gonna come up to this, uh, or the muzzle as it's probably better called. So I'm gonna come take this digit here, uh, this branch, put a dot there. I'm gonna put another dot over here and another dot over here. And again, we've got another curved line. So we're basically connecting these up like that and that looks pretty good. Now we're going to just put a simple curve line right there and that's gonna be a dimple smile. So you can really see the smile starting to come together. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna put some eyes on this uh, seal and that's gonna right away start to bring the face out. So one of the, we'll start with the first eye. We're gonna draw an oval here. Now it's slightly obstructed by this muzzle. So we'll go ahead and just sort of draw that oval if you wanna watch me. I'm not necessarily drawing the bottom part because it would be covered up by that. And then I'm gonna draw the other eye over here when that's in full view. So. I'll go ahead and draw the second oval just like that. That looks great. Now I'm gonna color these in, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of the white of the paper and that's gonna give me a nice highlight on the eye. And that highlight helps give a little extra character to it. You don't need it, but if you wanna add it, it's a fun detail. And it's one I like to use. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to start now at the top of the muzzle here or right above the nose. And I'm gonna put a dot there. I'm gonna put a dot here, just above the eye and a dot here. And again, we've got a curved line. So we'll just bring those together, go back and forth, darken them up as you get it. All right, that looks great. Now we're gonna come back to the bottom of the, we're gonna put the mouth on here. So we're gonna come to this dimple smile, put a dot, we'll put a dot maybe right about there and another dot there. So again, three dots, you can't really see the dot, but we're starting right in the center there. So there we go, just bringing that down. And then we got a nice sort of happy open mouth. And we like uh, happy animals here on Peppermint and Arles. we got this nice happy smile. We're just gonna connect it uh, using a curved line. It's a little tight so we won't use three dots. And there we go, I've got the bottom of the mouth open there. Now I'm gonna put in a tongue in there and that's almost like drawing a bird in the distance on a piece of paper if you were drawing a sketch or a letter M, just sort of like uh, two little bumps there. And then I'm just gonna color in everything but that tongue. And there we go, we've got the nice sort of mouth open and the tongue not colored in so it stands out. All right, now we're gonna put the bottom jaw on and we're kind of mirroring this shape here. So we're just gonna get a little bit of a curved line here and I'm wrapping that underneath the, the mouth there. So that's pretty good. We'll leave that there for now. We'll come back to that in a little bit. We'll come back to the back of the head here and put a dot here that we already have. We'll put a dot here and we'll put a dot here and we'll just kind of start to round out the back of the head there. There we go, that looks pretty good. Okay. That looks good. Now we're gonna to start to do the bottom of the back and we'll use this dot here, this dot, create a dot here and a dot here. And then we'll just kind of connect these in a nice curved line again. And now we're gonna take that back up the other direction. We're gonna keep this dot and a dot here and a dot here. And then bring that kind of back up just like that. Now at this point of the drawing, uh, we're going to just make a little, we're gonna round that up, just put a little bit of a curve at the end of it. Again, it's really small, so we're just kind of round the edge of that end line there. That looks pretty good, we'll come back to that area now. We're going to go back to the front of our seal, 
and we'll put a dot right here, just right below that, that jaw. And we'll put a dot maybe right about there. And maybe a dot right about there. So that looks pretty good. Three dots, curved line. And we've got the nice front of our seal. All right, that's going to bring us to one of the uh, another key part of the anatomy, and that's the four flipper. So we'll go ahead and to draw that, we're going to leave this dot here. as That's actually going to become the middle dot. We'll put a dot up here. Then we'll put a dot up here, and then we're just going to make a nice curving line here. And that's going to be the, the start of our four flipper. Now from this dot here, I'm just going to make three more, two, three more dots using the original dot that I had. And again, make that curve line, and that way they just kind of extend that out. All right, now we're going to put on some, the flippers have digits. They're actually it's very similar to your hand. They're going to have like five sort of... Uh, floppy fingers essentially is what you might uh, sort of see. They're not anywhere near as long as say a seal, a sea lion or a fur seal. So they actually see true seals have kind of smaller flip four flippers. So to capture that, we're just going to sort of draw these almost like sideways or falling J's. Uh, so basically we'll kind of put these five little digits on there. If you only have four, that's fine. Again, you see a lot of, you know, cartoon drawings where you know, they kind of simplify the, the digits, uh, and that's just fine. So there we go. I got this nice little floppy four flipper, and it looks like your hand. They actually have nails on the, these uh, as well, so I'll put a few nails there. That looks pretty good. And then uh, I'll go ahead and put the bottom of this dot here, dot here, and a dot here, and we'll kind of continue that along. And we're working our way towards the back here. So I'm going to put a dot up here, dot up here, use this dot, and then bring that together nicely, kind of round that off. So now we're working towards the back of the animal here. They actually have a nice uh, little stumpy tail, so I'm just going to kind of indicate that by almost like a, a, a another J shape there, just a little bit of a, a tip there. And then I'm going to put on the one of the four, one of the rear flippers here. I'll put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. And seals oftentimes will kind of rest in this position that we're drawing. So you'll sometimes see them kind of arched up like this. Um, so there we go. We've got this nice curving sort of shape. And then again, we've got those sort of floppy digits uh, that we'll kind of put on here. So you can see me draw them. You know, I'll get... Uh, and there we go, we've got our, our floppy digits there. Now we'll basically mirror this on the other side going the other direction. So we'll put a dot there, a dot there and a dot there, and we'll go ahead and connect these. There we go, that looks good. And then again, those sort of floppy digits, this time the other direction, you may not see them all, but there we go, that looks great. So there we go, we've got the rear flippers and the front flippers, and that's how it's gonna steer itself in the water. Uh, it's gonna propel itself mostly using the, the back muscles and the rear flippers, and then kind of use the four flippers for steering. Now on land, they're not the most, uh, you know, uh, agile and, and speedy on land. In fact, they really can't use these two appendages too well. They actually almost use their stomach muscles uh, sort of like an inchworm. They bounce around, they crunch their stomach muscles and then lunge forward. Sometimes they'll use a little four flipper for a little bit of movement, but it's not very strong and powerful So uh, on land. So basically these stomach muscles come in really handy. It looks like a water balloon that you drop on the ground when they move. They're kind of fun that way. I'm gonna put another uh, four flipper up here. This one's waving. We see a lot of fun behaviors here at Ocean Connection. So we'll get a nice wave going here. So there's my curve line. And then remember those floppy, small stumpy digits there. And I'll just bring that back. So that looks pretty good. Uh, by the way, these are sometimes called earless seals or, you know, the true seals are called earless seals. They actually have an ear. It's right about here. It's just a dot. Now they're called earless because they don't have an external ear. Uh, like a sea lion would have. If you look at a sea lion here at Ocean Connection, you would actually see a very visible ear. Whereas on the seal, it's harder to see. It's just this little hole, like the ear canal, so the sound goes into it. So ears are great for hearing. We have an external ear. It helps us channel sound. Uh, but in the water, they're not so aerodynamic, so the seals actually shed them. And even the, the sea lion that has an ear, it's pretty small compared to, say, an elephant or even our own ear. So these, uh, they do have hearing, they can hear, and they do have ears, but they're sometimes called earless seals because of that lack of an external ear. Now, another important adaptation that they have is their whiskers, and I'm going to draw those pretty fast. There's really no other way to draw whiskers other than kind of 
quick. Uh, you've probably drawn a cat before, so they're really not that different. These are also called vibrissa, and they help. The reason they're called that is because they sense vibrations in the water. So a seal will use that to uh, find its way in the dark, murkier water. Not all water is as crystal clear as maybe the beach you go to. Uh, so this also can help them find food. In fact, our friends at Ocean Connection recently told me a fact that I didn't even know, and that the harbor seals apparently can uh, sense a fish fish's movements up to 15 minutes away so it can be in an area of the water and sort of know that a fish was recently there up to 15 minutes ago so that's pretty amazing all right so here we go we've got our sea lion our seal done here we'll go ahead and put some uh sort of little ovals all around them their markings are modeled so you see this sort of modeling spotted uh sort of markings all over the seal so i'm going to go ahead and put some of those in some are bigger some are smaller than others you can't really get this wrong, just add a few to, you know, add a little more extra character and detail to your seal. So that looks great. Uh, our drawing is pretty much done. We're really uh, happy to uh, have shared this with you here today at Ocean Connection Live. Uh, thank you again to their team for having us today. We, Everybody's drawing is going to be a little bit unique. Uh, we all draw differently, and that's kind of the best of a drawing. So we look forward to seeing yours as well. If you're interested in learning how to draw a sea lion, join us at Peppermint Narwhal's YouTube page for our uh, series of How to Draw Awesome Animals. And we'll be spotlighting the sea lion on May 30th for uh, World Sea Lion Day. So we're very excited about that. Uh, what do you think, Shelly? Anything else uh, you have to say here? Oh my gosh, Brian, you are just amazing. You know, you always, always inspire us and your work is so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing it. You know, Peppermint Narwhal is also offering a wonderful, wonderful resource to budding artists or people that want to learn new artistic skills. If you check out their Facebook page, which is Peppermint Narwhal Creative, Brian is actually giving drawing lessons kind of throughout the week. And so make sure that you check it out. We hope that we've really inspired you. And I know that you've learned a lot. I want to learn how to draw when I watch him do it. It's absolutely inspiring. But we want to see your sketches. So please, 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 you guys have fun with this and share them. But if you share them, make sure that you do a hashtag and we want you to do hashtag minty sketch. And that way Brian's going to see them and he's going to be able to offer a little bit of input. And we absolutely want to see your work. So please share. You know, like I mentioned to you before, we have our own budding artist here. And so he wants to show off for you a little bit. We're going to bring up our friend Scooter. So we do painting here, not quite like Brian does. We do it in a different way and we do it as a form of enrichment for our animals. It's always their choice and we just reinforce creativity and making sure that they have fun. And Scooter, this is one of his favorite, favorite behaviors to do. It's absolutely wonderful for everybody because we reinforce his creativity. He goes a little crazy on it, but we put up all of his artwork. Um, on our website and we put it up on our Etsy store, Ocean Connections. And it's very, very reasonable. It all goes in a donation pool for animal care and welfare, which right now we really, really need. So if you are interested in obtaining any original seal or sea lion artwork, you certainly should go check out our website, oceanconnections.org, or you can look at our Etsy store, Ocean Connections, and you're gonna have lots to choose from. Scooter paints, paintings and wine glasses and steins and Christmas ornaments and coasters. We let him have a lot of fun. That is absolutely beautiful. And when I talk about creativity, look at all the, the curves on that piece of art. Can you kind of show that to everybody, Em? You know, what we're looking for him to do is go ahead and, and show us what you can do. And it's completely free form. So we love it. We're going to change his colors up right now. If you decide, gosh, I would like a piece of artwork. Oh, that's fantastic. If you would like a piece of artwork, but you want to choose your own colors, you can do that on our website. It's really, really easy to do. And we will actually take a picture of the animal painting for you. Can I see that? Thank you. We will take a picture of the animal painting for you and we will send it right along.
with your piece of artwork. So it's a great way to, to, to um, go ahead and support us. Thank you, Scooter. You did a fantastic job. This is absolutely beautiful. All right. Hey, so don't forget to check out Peppermint Narwhal. They have a website, they have a Facebook page. And Brian, thank you. You are absolutely wonderful. And we are so inspired by your talent. So thank you so much for sharing it with us. Um, for all of the rest of you, have a fantastic week. We hope that you loved this episode. We look forward to seeing you on Friday and we have a great surprise for you. We'll be announcing it a little bit later in the week. Meanwhile, stay safe, stay healthy, have a wonderful week. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye now.